mo pe oro olorun ni oja to je adan the tragic famine oda adalu in first corinthians chapter 13 ninu we corinth kini ori ketala the tragic famine oda adalu First Corinthians 13. Corinthians kini ori ketala. I read a few verses from before going back to it again. Mo ma kai se die ko to dipe bo pada lo si. First Corinthians 13. We Corinthians kini ori ketala. This is a tragic famine. E yi ni odati o je adanta so ni pare. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Be motilen fo and have not charity. I am become as sounding brass. Or a tinkling symbol. Although I have the gift of prophecy. And understand all mysteries. And all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, I have not charity. I am what? Nothing. Nothing. Beloved, you will never find anywhere in your Bible. Where the Bible says, God is faith. God is hope. But you will find God is love. There is a mystery behind love. There is something more powerful than faith. Really? You mean there is something more powerful than faith? The Bible says faith can move mountains. Yes, there is something more powerful than faith. Look at the power of faith to make whole. You will hear Jesus say, Thy faith has made thee whole. He didn't say, Thy love has made thee whole. Yet, love is more powerful. The Almighty God Himself, the Bible says, He is love. Love is the greatest thing in the world. Greatest thing in the world. And it is good to key into that process. Love has potent healing power both for mental and physical illness there is an expression in this first Corinthians 13 that shakes me to the root look at first Corinthians 13 look at verse 2 and though I have the gift of prophecy be most in a prince and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing 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 what a terrible word to apply to a human being nothing nothing means not anything it means not at all opposite of something it means of no account of no value 
is non-existent. He said, I am nothing. That's what he said. So who is Mr. and Mrs. Nothing? There are people without love. There are so many of them in our midst. Praying fire prayers. Praying dangerous prayers. But not an atom of love. There are many husbands holding VG every day. But they are wicked to their wife and their middle family. Surely, if you find a man who can speak English, French, Spanish, Spanish Latin, Latin, Swahili, Swahili, Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba, Yoruba. You certainly say is somebody. Surely. If you find a man who can communicate with birds, trees, trees. And inhabitants in the world, and even the angels, you will certainly say it's somebody. His phone will probably ring on non stop. And he will be very rich. Surely, a man with complete knowledge of all future events will be regarded as something. Surely, if I know all mysteries and will answer all questions that scientists want to ask, I will be, they will declare me that I'm somebody. Supposing I memorize the whole of the Bible and every encyclopedia in this world, and I know everything in the dictionary, I will be regarded as somebody or something. If I have faith to eliminate impossibilities, and every country is saying, Come and preach, come and preach. You will say, I'm something. If I dish out millions and millions of naira to the poor every week, and I speak in tongues, I prophesy, I understand mysteries, I have knowledge, I have faith, I give arms to the poor. The Bible is saying, I will still do all these things and still qualify for nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's vain. It does not exist. You can speak in multiple tongues. You can prophesy without love. You can have deep knowledge without love. You can have faith without love. You can have hospitality and generosity without love. You can sacrifice without love. You can perform spiritual activity without love. You can suffer persecution and die as a matter even without love. The Bible says if I can do all these things. I can prophesy. I understand mysteries. I have knowledge. I have faith. I could remove mountains. But there is no love. I am zero. Nothing. Beloved, here lies the secret. Why many prayers go unanswered. Here lies the secret. Why some will hold vigils and vigils and vigils and vigils. Going from mountain to mountain to mountain. But there is no love in their hearts. And God is love. God therefore cannot answer their prayers. Close your eyes, beloved. Close your eyes, beloved. Tell the Lord that every unloving attitude in my life let the blood of Jesus clear them away. Every unloving attitude in my heart the blood of Jesus wash them away. Begin to pray now.
Amen. Ah, me. The Bible says, Bibeli, we pray. Even if I give my body to be burnt, <laughs> and I have not love, I'm nothing. There was a man called Thomas Cromwell. Thomas Cromwell. Thomas Cromwell was arrested for preaching Christ. And the punishment was to execute him by hanging and burning. Thomas Cromwell. Thomas Cromwell. So they locked him up. And they kept telling him every day. If you deny Jesus, we will let you go. If you deny Jesus, we will let you go. I cannot deny my Lord. No, I cannot deny my Lord. He kept saying that. He kept saying that. Then they were trying to convince him. So what was the problem? You ask to deny, deny. Then you, you remain alive. Remain alive, and then you can still go to Jesus and confess your sins. They bombarded his mind with these things. They okay if you don't even want to say you are denying. If you don't want to say so with your mouth, you just sign. Because it became weak. The and his enemies were rejoiced. All of a sudden, it dawned on him that they are disappointed the Lord who loved him so much. So he called them again. I said, I'm sorry. I I didn't I will not deny Jesus Christ. I, I, I disagree with what I've signed. They were so sad. They got very angry. They dragged him to the marketplace. Tied him to the pole there. And set him ablaze from the feet. They, set, they put fire around him and set the fire. Thomas Conway began to burn. Thomas His flesh started to melt away. He now stretched out his right hand into the fire. Himself. And he said, My unworthy right hand. You were the one that signed the evil document. You will be the first to burn in the fire. And he kept the hand stretched like this. Until that hand burned to the bone. And dropped. And it was also burnt alive. What the Bible is saying. Even if you behave like that man. And you have no love. He's profited you nothing. It's nothing. The lack of love is the world's greatest sin. If you love your neighbors, you won't blow them up. You won't shoot them down. You won't gossip against them. You won't fight them. A lot of Christians go to church, but there is no iota of the love of Christ in their hearts. And love is a practical thing. If practical thing. For example, now, if you have about 200 dresses at home, and you see somebody with no dress, just one single dress all the time, and you cannot say, let me take a part of this and give to them. It's lack of love. I need We were our fat. 
Why love is thin. We wise those who truly love are just one step from heaven and true love never asks how much must I do but how much can I do money can build a house but it takes love to build to build a home. And the most lonely place on earth is the human heart where love is absent. The world will be a better place when the power of love replaces the love of power. Many just love power. They want power. They want power. There is no love in their hearts. Love is the key that unlocks all doors. Love is the only service that power cannot command, power cannot bear. And if you see a heart that loves, they always remain young. Love will find a way no matter how crooked the ways. True love is willing to help people even if it hurts them. But if you are the kind of person anytime they say, do this, what is in it for me? Do that, what do I get? And Christians, we Christians here, believers, listen listen to this very well. It is impossible for two persons to hate each other and they say they love God. When you are out of love, you are out of Jesus Christ. This is a very, very serious matter. Where love reigns is where God reigns. And when you truly love, obedience to God becomes a thing of it becomes a gift of joy like I told you here before the Bible says husband love your wife husband love your wife it's not a suggestion it's not an advice it is a command so you love your wife not because she's good because, but because you have been commanded to love her you love her whether she snores like hippopotamus whether she forgets to brush her teeth whether she's uncaring whether she's unfeeling the Bible didn't give condition say love your wife you say oh, ah, no ah, it can't be like that did you know what my wife did say, the woman woke up and found me crying and he said daddy why are you Crying. He said, Why are you crying like a baby? Are you a baby? Nonsense. Stop, Stop crying and go to work. Is that the kind of person you say I should love? The Bible says, Love your wife. It's a commandment. I say, Why are you working so slowly? Say it's because I'm sick. And instead of your wife to say sorry, say, why are you always sick? Are you a woman? Are you having menstrual pain? You are a spoiled child. If you want to die, die. The Bible says, in spite of that, it is a commandment. Love your wife. I gave this instruction somewhere. 
I think it's what repeating today before we start praying. As we go into this 70 days prayer and fasting. Are you here? You have hatred in your heart against anybody? There is somebody you don't greet, you don't want to greet, you have said there is no way you are going to ever, ever, ever be together you are making a huge mistake the Bible says if your enemy is hungry give him food if he is thirsty give him water so by so doing you put out coals of fire on his head and there is no way somebody will have out coals of fire on the head and the person will be comfortable men who love their wives don't ever beat their wives don't ever beat your wife for any reason if you do the love of Christ is not in your heart don't ever forget that your wife is your greatest asset don't ever forget to check the level of the peace of that woman regularly. I'm talking to the men here now. Don't associate with men that lack credibility. Don't ever lie out to your wife no matter the level of insults on you. This is for men. Don't ever just wave off the ideas, advice, suggestion of your wife as if she has no brain. Never treat your wife as a servant. If you do, the love of Christ is not in your heart. No matter how many mountains you go to, you are wasting your time. Never make your wife a negative example before friends and family. Don't compare your wife with anyone. I've seen men comparing their wives to new casters they are seen on television. Never cheat on your wife. You are cheating yourself. Never discuss the weak points of your wife in public. Never, never call your wife unpleasant names. Like prostitute, witch, fruitless entity, harlot, useless. Bastard, rather call her blessed, capable, beautiful, and virtuous. And that's what you will get. Never ever place your wife before family and friends for discussion. And never allow your parents and family to dictate what happens to your wife. And don't be the kind of man that they will add phone call, they will add text messages, they will add password, they will add, add, add everything from their wives. If you do, the love of Christ is not in your heart. And the Bible says, when husband and wife get together, their union in prayer is the strongest. This is one area in which the enemy just comes in and takes away our blessings. And sisters who are here, accept your husband as he is. With the strength and the weaknesses thereof. Stop thinking that your way is always right. And don't be comparing your husband with other people. And those of you who are used to complaints, stop complaining, communicate instead. And stop 
talking before your husband finishes his sentences of speaking. You interrupt him when he's talking. Let him finish everything he wants to say. And then you talk if you need to talk at all. And you as a woman be a companion and not just a roommate. And always pray for that your husband. And and make him your best friend. And do not quarrel in front of your children. And both of you should stop talking when you are hungry. And learn to search your quarrel very quickly. Because the enemy attacks your marriage. A lot of couples will take part in this program. I want them to be blessed. That's why I'm going through all this. And I want you to understand. Love is a deep matter. And it's a very serious thing. Long time ago in South Africa. There was apartheid government there then. And there was a lot of violence. When eventually the black people took over government. They called for a peace and reconciliation meeting between the blacks and the whites. One, one black South African woman did something that shows what Christian love really means. They have invited the man who killed her son. The, the man killed his police, a white policeman killed her son. And they burnt the body of the son. And it was the only son the woman had. And as these policemen were drinking and having parties, they were turning the body in the fire until it became ashes. It remains just this woman and her husband. Eight years later, the same policeman came back and arrested her husband and they took her there they bound the husband they poured petrol on the husband and she was watching them burning her husband South Africa as the man was about to stop talking as he burnt the man in the fire the last thing he said to the wife he said, forgive them now there is a reconciliation meeting they brought the black woman they brought the policeman who killed the son a 10 year old son and who killed the husband it was judgment time they asked the woman what do you want this is the man who killed them what do you want the woman said I'm a child of God and I have the love of Christ in my heart I want three things number one let this man take me back to where he burnt my husband so I can give him a decent burial secondly the court should command this man to be coming to me. To be coming to me. Every now and then. Because he has killed my whole family. So he should be coming to me to greet me. Let, let me be a mother to him. Certainly. So I want the man to know. 
that are forgiven him. The whole court was silent. Say, I've forgiven him. Say, although I cannot see very well. Let somebody lead me to where he's standing. So that I can embrace him. So that he can know that my forgiveness is real. As that elderly woman was led across the courtroom. The white policeman fainted. I've never seen that kind of expression of love and forgiveness before. Then somebody in the courtroom when he saw what was happening. There was hardly any dry eye in that court that day. Somebody there in the court opened his mouth wide. <laughs> and contrary to all court regulations, he sang Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that say, I like the whole of the courtroom joined the song. That is a practical example of love. So you that you are currently with this, currently with that. Don't agree to don't agree to that. You talk to anybody anyhow you like. They did not treat you the way they treated that woman. They did not treat you like that. And they insulted me, I'm leaving. Where they slapped Jesus, they punished him because of you and I. I'm praying that that spirit of brotherly love will come upon us in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. The Bible says, by this, shall all men know that you are my disciple when you love one another. When we got born again, we had a baptism of love in the church. Somebody will write a prayer request. I've learned Taylor in I need a sewing machine. Please, I've been praying that God should provide it. We arrive in church next day, we find a new sewing machine inside the church. Somebody has bought it for the person. And the person goes away with it. Somebody asks something to celebrate. We, we all gather there a mass. We don't see somebody in church. If the person will say, Stop visiting me, I'm okay. I only travel. Please, please. So if you call yourself a group leader, call yourself a fellowship leader, you call yourself this leader, that leader, choir leader, you didn't see somebody in singing practice once, you didn't see them in fellowship twice, and you don't go out of your way to find out what has happened. That's the lack of love we're talking about. Your house you you leader, you didn't see somebody for some time and you didn't go to look for the person. This is the situation. The fact that we are praying fire prayers, we should be the most loving human beings on earth. We should be the most loving people on earth. And we should know what we believe in. I'm praying that that spirit of love will overshadow our lives in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. Bow down your heads again. Carry the Lord. And all unloving attitudes.
attitude in my life Lord of Jesus wash them away talk to the Lord now you have the opportunity 